Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin through the lens of the NASDAQ. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you sign up, you'll get access to a whole lot of things. Uh, a pretty nice website with a lot of charts, on-chain stuff, derivative charts, turn on investment charts, strategy dashboard, all that good stuff, Telegram alerts channel, Telegram chat room, et cetera. So make sure you guys check it out into the cryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So Bitcoin today, it's actually been quite an adventure. All right, so Bitcoin started off at what, 43, then it went to 45, then back to 43, then back to 45, now it's at 44. So it's just been all over the place. And one of the things that I, I think is worth really thinking about here is we have the CPI number come out, right? This is the consumer price index. And it came out at 7.5% year over year. And that's basically the highest it's been in 40 years. So now the question is, is well, what's the Fed going to do about it, right? Are they going to are they going to raise interest rates more? Are they going to are they going to hike rate high, raise rates sooner than, than the market's expecting? What are they going to do? And following that, what did we see? We saw a sell off in the S and P. We saw a sell off in the Nasdaq. But it got me wondering, you know, at the time. Bitcoin was holding strong. It was still at 45K, despite the fact the NASDAQ was down like 1.5%. Right now, Bitcoin's down about half a percent on the day, but the NASDAQ lost over 2%. And so it got me wondering, well, you know, why are we seeing such a, a big difference here? I mean, if you go look over here, you can see that Bitcoin's down about half a percent. The NASDAQ dropped 2.33%. The S&P dropped almost 2%. The dollar is up 02 So Bitcoin, considering the circumstances... It's doing fairly well, right? It's all, it's all about opportunity costs. Like, does it bleed against something? So then what happens, if we go look at the NASDAQ really quick, we can, this was, I mean, this was what basically happened following, following the Fed announcement this morning or the, of the CPI. It was basically just in a downtrend. But if we go look at this on a longer term time frame, we know typically that Bitcoin goes parabolic or it, in order to see Bitcoin go parabolic, you typically want to see a very a, a healthy NASDAQ, okay, tech stocks, generally risk on environment. If you go look at, at prior mania phases by Bitcoin, this was one, NASDAQ was doing relatively well following a fairly nice uptrend. You go back to, to you know, the end of uh, 2017, Bitcoin put it in, a, in its market cycle peak, NASDAQ was in an uptrend. You go to the end of 2013, Bitcoin put in a, a major peak. NASDAQ was in an uptrend. You also go to, say, earlier in 2013, NASDAQ was still in a fairly nice uptrend going into that local top that we had in you know, the, the, the first half of 2013. NASDAQ struggled for a little bit, but then the NASDAQ did better uh, a few months later, and then Bitcoin had another local top. So then you know, it got me wondering, well, everything's down today. Basically, everything's down. Okay, um, I, I don't know. Is, is gold up today? Let me just go take a look. See what, if gold if gold's up. E, look, even gold is down, right? Even gold is down. Gold's down 0.36%. So unfortunately, gold investors don't, probably don't even know what a bull run looks like at this point. It's been about 10 years. Um, but re with regards to Bitcoin, I was like, okay, well, if the entire market's down, then judging Bitcoin's performance based on its valuation against the U.S. dollar isn't really that fair if the entire market is down, right? Like look at it compared to other assets. So what if we look at it through the lens of the NASDAQ? If you take Bitcoin divided by the NASDAQ, it actually tells an interesting story. One of the things that it shows is that based on this metric, Bitcoin did not put in a new all-time high in, in, in November, right? It did not put a new all-time high in November. And actually the, the same level, you know, it sort of went to the same price uh, again over here. It actually looks like, um, the, the October move was actually a higher price than the November move when accounting for, for the NASDAQ. But what I think is interesting is, again, this was a high. This was a lower high. But also, if you look at the sort of like the reverse and draw this line in the sand, you know, perhaps or something like this, you see a, I mean, you see a low you see a higher low. I mean, this isn't really a low, but it's just where we're starting out. But you see a, a certain price, a low, a higher low, a higher low. But again, we have a lower high and a lower high. So what I like about this chart, though, is it really shows that Bitcoin, while it has, actually, it's been doing relatively okay against the US dollar for the last couple of weeks. But over the last few days, despite the fact that the NASDAQ has showed a decent amount of, of weakness, 
Bitcoin's actually outperforming it. Okay, so if we take a measured move here from say January, from late January, Bitcoin is actually up about 27% against the NASDAQ. It, for, for Bitcoin to go back up to the top of this channel, uh, it would need to rally approximately another 33% or so. Now, obviously, we don't really know what that would look like exactly if we were to go to the top because the NASDAQ is dynamic. It's not like it doesn't change. But if the NASDAQ were constant, you know, a 33% price rise by Bitcoin would actually put it closer to right around 60K. All right. Now, that would be if the NASDAQ stays constant, which it won't. Right? We know that, that it won't happen. But I think this chart is useful, uh, not necessarily for, for people that are just 100% crypto, but for people that might be looking at, at, at the crypto markets for you know, the very first time and, and wondering what's going on. And to say, look, you know, there's this idea of, of you know, like there is no alternative, right? Like besides, by, besides the stock market, what else do you put money into, right? Tina, this is a, a common saying, right? And the stock market is, you know, when, when it goes risk off, like what are you supposed to do? There is no alternative is the general idea. Well, perhaps there is an alternative. I mean, you can see here, despite NASDAQ, the, the, the relative weakness of the NASDAQ, Bitcoin is now hopefully back in, in, a, in a local uptrend at the very least. So we'll see where this lands us. But even today, you can see Bitcoin is down about 0.6%. I mean, it's all over the place. But the NASDAQ is down over 2%. So I think it provides an interesting view on the market when you when you sort of value things based on other metrics rather than just valuing it based on the US dollar. It's the same idea with altcoins, right? When you value altcoins, rather than valuing them against the US dollar, value them against, say, like Ethereum. Value them against Bitcoin. See how they're performing against the blue chips. If they can't outperform the blue chips, then what's the point? The other thing to, to look at with, with, with regards to the Bitcoin NASDAQ valuation is that there's a couple things here. First of all, still on a crazy bull run against the NASDAQ, despite the fact that the NASDAQ went on a crazy bull run itself, right? NASDAQ went on a crazy, crazy bull run, um, you know, since March of 2020. Eh, it doesn't really matter when you compare Bitcoin to it because Bitcoin easily outperformed it. But here's where things get a little bit interesting. We've talked before about, you know, Bitcoin's prior all-time high. Um, one of the things we've looked at before is, okay, well, we are still well above the prior all-time high when looking at, at the 2017 all-time high. When you account for the money supply and say, like, divide this by M2, you can see that we already tested the prior all-time high back in the summer, okay? But where it gets even more interesting is when you divide Bitcoin's valuation by the NASDAQ, we are at the all-time high right now, but furthermore, we've actually spent some time below it, right? Like we've actually already spent some time below it. Uh, we spent some time below it in, in the summer of, of 2021. We also spent some time below it in early 2022. The time above it where we had these local tops was in the first part of 2021. And then again in, in Q4 of 2021 as well. And so we're sort of in this range right now where Bitcoin against the NASDAQ is putting in, um, you know, it's like it's putting in higher lows, but it's also putting in lower highs. And so I guess the question is as well, which way is it going to eventually break? I do think it's worth at least thinking about this chart because what it shows is despite the fact that we are in a generally risk off environment and, and Bitcoin has historically been incredibly volatile, it's doing relatively okay against the NASDAQ. Again, it still has not given back all of these gains that it saw, you know, that it saw early on uh, in say late 2020, it hasn't given back that. But right now we are testing the 2017 all time high when accounting for the NASDAQ tech stocks, right? So relatively risk on, um, uh, relatively risk on thing to, to be talking about. Bitcoin's also risk on. Or so they say, right? I mean, this is, I know as crypto investors, we like to think that Bitcoin's not risk on and that it's, you know, it's basically what people would flock to when, when, when everything's come, come stumbling down. But in reality, uh, what we've seen over the last few months is that if the stock market is, is crashing um, or, or pulling back 15, 20%, there's a good chance you're going to see Bitcoin pull back. We also saw that in March of 2020. We saw it in December 2018. We saw it in early 2018 as well. We saw it in September of 2021. This is nothing new. Uh, this has been across the board every single time when the stock market pulls back, we generally see Bitcoin pull back. Fortunately, right now, though, despite the fact that NASDAQ isn't looking that strong, Bitcoin is at least temporarily uh, outperforming it. So something to watch for and, and note that the last time Bitcoin was outperforming the NASDAQ 
was was back over here in, in late 2021. Since then, it was in a downtrend before finally starting a new uh, a new uptrend. Let me know what you guys think about this in the in the comments below. Remember, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.